I should say, welcome to Youth Voices Live. Um, very excited. Uh, I have a couple of gentlemen who are going to be representing New Directions here today, and um, and Karen will take care of other introductions. See you soon. I'll be back in four. Great. Hi, everybody. Um, I think. If you have if you have noise in your room, um, try to mute when you're not talking, um, and we'll do the best we can. And right now, can um, Okamus, can you give me thumbs up if you can hear me? Okay. Excellent. Thank you. So it looks like Jen and Christopher can hear me, and maybe Brandon can't. Um, I could hear all you guys fine. Um, so let's go ahead and start with introductions. And just as a reminder, we're talking about saying no today. And we're going to talk about the poem. And we're also going to talk some about Baltimore and what's going on there. So just as an introduction, um, why don't you tell me your name, where you are, and tell everybody your name and where you are, and what you're thinking about today. Anything you want. It could be about stuff like Baltimore or school or anything else. Yeah, I just would like to. Um, Jen, you want to start us off? Oh. And our cameras also aren't working. Yeah. Okay. Um, Brandon, you can start us off. Yeah. And Jen, I'm in all kinds of school. Um, we're in English 9 class. And I think um, I'm really expecting a lot of talk about like both of me. Good. Thank you. Christopher? You're new with us here, aren't you? Uh, yes, I am. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Chris. I'm here in Oakmiss. And uh, I'm thinking about school and interracial, I guess, how it affects us during class. Excellent. Thanks for being here. Brandon, I'm still I'm not sure if you can still hear me. Brandon, we can Brandon hear you. Uh, can't hear anyone right now. Yeah. Is it, uh, is it working? Oh, it's okay, fine. well we'll welcome Brandon and have him chime in later perhaps. Um, Michael and friend at New Directions, you guys want to introduce yourselves? You guys need to unmute yourselves. There you go. Uh, today, um, I'm thinking about Baltimore. And Can you introduce yourself so we know who you are? Michael. <laughs> Hi, Michael. Go ahead. Well, my name is Enrique. I'm here in New Directions. And I'm from the Bronx. And I don't got nothing on my mind right now. Excellent. Welcome, Enrique. We're glad to have you here with us. Um, do you, did you, have you guys read that poem, and do you want to talk about that, or do you want to jump right let's into Baltimore? The poem up. is called The Art of Disappearing. Let's, let's jump right into Baltimore. Well, let's jump right into Baltimore. That seems like that's what's everybody's mind right now. So what, what are your general thoughts about what's going on in Baltimore, and are you seeing anything going on around you? Because I know there's been protests in New York related to this, too. No, not really. No, I heard like a hundred people were arrested in New York. Yeah, downtown Manhattan. Yeah, okay. So, what's on your mind about Baltimore, and what have you heard news today? Well, uh, I, I heard, you know, cops killed some kid, I guess, and that's that's what caused the riot. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts from Okemos about Baltimore or what you're hearing in the news? 
Oh, not really. Okay. Uh, what about that mom that um, beat up her son for riding in Baltimore? Yeah, that? you know, I just only saw that for a second. I didn't really hear about it. I don't know what was going on with that. Chris, you want to talk? Um, I haven't heard much about the riot personally. I know all I've heard is from other people and you know, social media sites. So I'm not a great source at the moment. Isn't that like oh, African American people try to like escape? And then the police just shot them. They didn't even like try to know where um the situation or not. They just kill them. So is not that because of that? Yeah, they they put him in a van with like no seat belt and no padding, and then they drove really rough. And I guess. One of the questions is like some people say they do this all the time to like punish people and some people say they don't but the question is like and then what happened is his I think his spine was broke and he eventually died because of that so it's terrible it, it's pretty terrible um, and you know it's another it's like there's been a whole series of these right we've been talking about this over the last few weeks of just police issues especially with African American um, so the big news I heard this morning was that the Baltimore um, prosecutor is pressing criminal charges against the police it's pretty big news I think um, it seems like a lot of these other cases they haven't they haven't actually pressed charges. So that was that was big news this morning. So I want to connect this to the thing we've been talking about, which is how do you how do you say no and when do you say no? Um, and talk about um, when do you say no to the police and like when is that okay or how do you feel about that? Honestly, honestly I say no to the police all the time. Police over here is cruel. Are they? Yeah. And and what's the response and how does that work out? Cops over here is disrespectful. Say that again. Cops over here is disrespectful. They could be disrespectful. Right yeah. So he said the cops are disrespectful. So how how do you how do you say no to people who are disrespectful and and like? How do we get how do we get to a point where things are better? And like what's okay in saying no to the cops and what's not? I mean the only time I say it's okay to go to the cop is let's say they ask you for ID and identification, it's not it's not obligated, you don't have to give it to them. You know what I'm saying? You could you could tell them no. If they, if they, you know, let's say they train you to lock you up and stuff. Like that's a. That's what I'm doing. How do people at How are people at Okemos feeling about this? And what's your situation there? Is it different? Um, I haven't had much run-in with the police, but uh, the occasional one I've had, uh, it was very interesting. I won't go into detail, but they were really nice about it. I didn't have to say no to anything. They didn't ask for much. I mean, I've had friends who have had bad run-ins with the police, and uh, they've been... I don't know how to put it. I guess they were did the wrong thing and ended up in the wrong place because he had said something bad. And it was partly my friend's fault and partly the police's fault because of my friend's response. He said it aggressively and it backfired on him. But it's a free country. You get to speak, you get to say whatever you want. True, but as with everything, there are rules. Yeah, you're right. 
And sometimes, does sometimes saying no, like, are there different ways to say no? Like sometimes you, can you say no in a way that antagonizes people, and sometimes you can say no in a way that's respectful and doesn't like escalate things? Yeah, of course. Yeah. We so, learned like, about that in uh, Taekwondo, in my martial arts, um, how to, like if someone is attacking you, or wants to bully you, you don't raise your fist and say no really aggressively. You put up your palms and back away and try and say it in a calm way. That way you don't make them upset or give them a reason to hate you. I like that. That's a nice uh, sort of parallel to think about. How, how can you do that with language? You know, if cops are hassling you, what's a way you can say no? You can just walk away. But just walk away. Okay. I mean, but sometimes, you know, they, like, they hold you. They, like, in the Bronx, they like to, you know, intimidate people and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, me personally, I, I don't get along with the cops. You know, I don't I don't respect cops, none of that. So, you know, my, my perspective is, like, different than other people because I have bad altercations with police and stuff, you know, and that's just me. Um, actually, I fell in America, I think, a lot of American people were kind of scared of cops, because in my country, we, like, cops are very friendly, actually. Some people, like, even, like, even some people, they lost their way, and they would call us and ask, like, oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So, I think kind of, they're, like, cost problem is really sensitive here. Yeah. yeah, so definitely, like, how people talk to us affects how we respond to them, too. And, and how, how do you think, and I muted you guys, but just unmute yourselves when you want to talk. Um, how do you think race plays into this? Like, do you think people are treated differently by the police? Do you think everybody's attitude is different depending on race or not so much? I think it can change uh, police's view of the situation, whether it's the race or the location. Like, if it's a bad neighborhood, they immediately are very suspicious. I mean, I personally am like that just because I have been raised in a privileged neighborhood and I guess I'm cautious around on privileged neighborhoods. I think attitude and how you treat it is a very similar problem because um, I don't really think about it as race, maybe race, but I'm not, I'm not sure about that, but I'm, I'm really sure I think that people's attitude is really related to their how they treat it because like, Oh, when I fight with my sister, her like, behavior is not showing me, I really like that. I feel really uncomfortable. I feel attitude is really important. Yeah, I, I agree. So she said attitude is like everything. And I think like how you come into a situation or how you've been treated in the past. And it's not always race. I mean, what are what are other issues that sort of make things more difficult? Chris talked about just what neighborhood you're in. Nah, um, the cops, the cops here, they think they could, they could, you know, like, overtook people, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and they think only because they cops, they got, you know, higher rules, I guess you, you could say. And they think, like, they like they take they power to a whole other advantage. That's what they do. So, what would you do to change that? And like, what are ways that we can say no, but in a way that makes the situation better at some point? Reverse. 
<laughs> Beat yourself, please. What are ways, like, how can we make the situation better, especially in places where there's just such a big problem where the cops aren't relating? I mean, how can we make it better, and how can we say no so that, but in a way that makes it better down the road? Here in the Bronx, the only problem here is the first and, and the first stop. So, you know that 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 rule that the cops you know appeared with they stop everybody you know try to get little information stop at first so they stop they stop everybody basically to, to find out little information you know or find they or they find people with drugs and stuff and that's how you know if they like, that's just it first and rich you know first stop whatever because they always want some other thing I don't know. I don't know how to explain. No, that makes sense. So I've heard, like on social media, I've heard people talking about like protesting against the stop and frisk thing. What what are ways to change that? I really don't know. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, he's talking about in New York they have this stop and frisk thing where they just sort of randomly stop all kinds of people, and it's people have been really upset about it. And my question was, what are ways that we can say no to that, or protest, or do something constructive to change it? How about, about we like kind of write a letter or something for the like police forces or government official thing that. Um, that helps a lot. Like one of my one of my friends, like she feel bad about some problems, so she wrote a letter to um to really official important um like website, and then I think yeah that can help. Mhm. Mm so writing letters. I'm a big fan of writing letters to myself, and I think if enough people do it, sometimes it does make a difference. And I mean, certainly with the stop and frisk thing, there's an attention to it across the country. I mean, where where I live, you know, I've heard about it. I know people are unhappy about it. I think people just need to quit, keep pushing until there's change. So, what do you guys think about protests? It's a lot of people dying because of that. Yeah. What do you think about protests and what's going on in Baltimore and what's going on in other cities? And like, is that an effective way to say no? Um, I think. Sorry. It's all right. Keep going. Protest is really important because if you want to make a change and if you want to. Make benefit to more like honest thing, right thing. You have to protest. So that, like, I, yeah, that's really important to say. Like, no, we have to. That makes a lot of change. Well, me personally, I stay away from cops. Does that mean you wouldn't protest? Mm, not really. Well, because I think I will. Every time I get stopped from from the cops, I go to court. I do with that. You know, if I need to bring out a lawsuit, I do that. Because how I think about it is, even though a cop kills somebody, they not you know they not getting in trouble for it. Nothing's gonna happen. They're basically, the precinct is just backing them up, backing their story up. They ain't nothing gonna happen. <laughs> Enrique, were you gonna say something? No, I wasn't. I'm Michael. That's Enrique. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so <laughs> you know, I can't. In the video, I can't see one of you, and I so I wasn't. Put your face in the. There you go. All right. I'm sorry. Oh. So en Enrique is the hood one. Yeah. Got it, got it. So, Michael, did you have something to say? Yeah, um, I was saying the reason why people normally protest is because there, nobody is letting them like, talk. So, instead of going into 
wait for appointments to talk to somebody that's more higher than you and for them to understand when they're just gonna back police. Everybody just gets together and protests. So I, everybody has no choice but to hear them to see them. Reaction. Uh -huh. Are you guys hearing anything in the news about the protests and and sort of what what's the line between protests that are like a productive way to say no and then the rioting that's going on that's causing problems I don't think rioting is a very I mean in certain situations rioting I guess can be productive but it depends on what you're trying to do like I think getting Going off of what Jin was saying, getting lots of people to write letters or have a majority and have it an obvious uh, conclusion, like most people want the same thing, I think it'd be hard for people to ignore that. It's interesting though like how much the news, what the news covers and like when it turns into a riot it's on the news but like you don't really hear news about a million people writing letters. Right. Why, why do you hear about, that is? Because the deaths and injuries and lawsuits make better news stories. They get, grab people's attention and make them interested in and it's something that everyone fears, but is, I guess, drawn into. Well, people only think about negativity. Do you think people only think about that, or the news only covers it? The news only covers it. Yeah, I think so, too. I think if there was a news channel that was, like, about positive, more productive things, <laughs> do you think people would watch it? I think, like, 10% of people would watch it, honestly. Hmm. What about social media? Because that's kind of a di another way to say no that's kind of different. I mean, it depends on what you want to do with it. Like... Some people. Um, some people can write posts about like um, what they want to protest about, and have everyone write the same thing or shut down their accounts and have the social media site uh, be forced into the protest or something of that sort. Do you think social media is a, an, an effective way to say no to things like this? Sometimes. Depends on the situation. Like what about Baltimore? I mean, Baltimore has the reason, though. So talk more about that. Because cop killing has been for years already. Has... If you really look into the, all the cops that have killed people, their their cases has been dismissed, or either there's nothing being done about it. Right. So, Baltimore they reacted. They came up with a riot. That's to me that's reasonable, because people people began cop cops been killing people for years already. So nothing's been doing. Not, nothing has changed besides the court. The court has been covering up cops' information and stuff, you know, so to me, they got a pretty good reason for it. But not just Baltimore, I mean everybody, right? Well, yeah, yeah, basically. Because it's not so, only I mean, 
it's not only in Baltimore that's you know cops have killed somebody. In. Right. So there's certainly been a lot of social media about the Baltimore thing. I I wonder the the prosecutor pressing criminal charges against these police this morning. This is that's the first time I can remember that happening in a long time. Do you think that the protests and the social media campaign had an effect on that? Is it going to bother you too much because they're putting forward a right here? Oh, look at that. Okay, thank you, Michael. That's all right. You want to leave a portfolio panel for a minute, is that okay? Yeah, it's still fun. Awesome. So the question was, do you think that this, all the talk on social media about Baltimore is having an effect in all the protests? So far, a little bit. It's spreading all over the world slowly. I mean, I think, yeah. It's Go ahead. Sure. So, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. You can talk. Um, social media is, is pretty popular these days. Like SNS, like Twitter is popular. So if social media is really and it affects a lot. Um, I have a question. Like the protest thing, like did they protest like a legal way or illegal way? Because I heard that there's like legal protest illegal. I just want to know the like protest legal way or legal way. So the question is, it, are the are the protests being done in a legal way or an illegal? Way? Yeah. Anybody have thoughts on that? Well, some protests are done illegally. Some are not. I think illegal protests get people's attention more, but it also gets more people in trouble, more people injured and shot. So it. Depends on what you're So thinking back to Ferguson too, I mean the same thing. There were legal protests and there were illegal protests. And I mean I think the illegal stuff particularly is like destroying property or you know, I don't know what, shooting things. what's so Chris just said he thinks the illegal stuff is more effective. It's easy to commit a crime. Right. It's very hard to do good and for somebody to compliment you to, of doing that, you know, good that you did. Right. I mean, the news isn't going to cover people like how people. They cover people burning cars and throwing up their sue windows. That's what gets people attention. But when they cover people doing illegal things, what do they say about those people? I mean, how do you think those people are characterized? Well, when the news is trying to cover up for somebody, they say very little things about that person. Right, like you guys were talking about the, the mom and the son or whatever it was that were having a, a fist fight or whatever. Like that's the thing that stuck out on the news, right? Mm -hmm. So what does that make people think about protesters? They're what? They can be doing it uh, in secret. Like some people don't know. That's why they wear the masks and dark, dark clothing. So they don't, they want to change, but they don't want people to know who they are. I think that that kind of video thing is made people think like protest is violent and very um, bad. But I don't think protest is that thing. Like, because, um, if you need some and a better way to go, you have to protest and you have to say it's wrong. But um, illegal way is a little problem, I think. I I I agree protest is really important, but if if that is if that is like 
violence or um like very uh, you know some like bad way that's not good right so like when people see people burning the CVS or whatever they don't say oh it's great those people are expressing their voice right I mean some people might say that but some people will say you know not cool to do that they actually that CVS thing I heard that it was really hard for them to get the CVS to come into that neighborhood and so now how do you think the people who run that store feel like probably not so good right so how so we started talking about just the whole aspect of violence so that's another that's another saying no thing like do you how do you say no to violence or do you or is that an issue don't forget to unmute yourself if you want to talk I, this is really like difficult to say no in front of violence because maybe you may get in the violent situation um, if you were in, I, I think if I were in that kind of situation, I'll call, I, I'll ask people for help. Like, and even though, I don't know, even though you're scared, I think you have to say it. It's not right way, right, and violence is very scary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it seems to build like a fire, you know, it starts and then it just can get totally out of control. I, I like the idea about asking people for help. I think in anything that you're saying no that's hard, is it easier to say it in a group of people? Sure. I think almost everything is easier when you have other people to back you up because, like, just doing anything alone, like, like it, it gets your imagination going, and it's easy to be scared out of things but with other people. It's easier to go out and do something and try something new. That's why, uh, well, that's pretty much why my dad won't let me go out with my friends alone, because <laughs> we always start doing something stupid. So that's um like. A group of people is, I think, really good way because if you talk about a group of people and think about it with a lot of people, you can see another aspect of things. Like, if you're alone, you can see, oh, this, this is not good. Like, just one point of view. But if there are a lot of people, you can see other people. Like, how do you think about it? I think it's really important. They can share their ideas. Like, an opinion about other people. That's a good point. So Karen, mm -hmm. can, I wanted to ask, I don't know if this came up already, but I was thinking that um, saying no to peers is different than saying no to authorities. Like saying no to teachers, saying no to police, saying no to, you know, people. Parents. Parents, yeah. Has that come up yet? And how is that different than saying no to peers? Because you know what? I mean, teachers need to be told no sometimes too, but, and others. Any thoughts about that? I think it's difficult oh, to say peers, because because like if I, I know. If I say no, and if I said exactly right, I think people don't feel good, actually. This is very true. So if I want to say something no, sometimes I, I, just, oh, I just don't say it. So I'm kind of worried about their own oh, emotions. So I don't want to hurt them. So are you saying it's harder to say no to peers? Yeah. I have to agree with that because it's always hard because you know them and you're afraid of what their opinion might be of you after you try and say no. And you're always afraid to lose that person maybe as a friend 
or just make them an enemy. So it can always change their attitude attitude towards you. No, I'm not scared to say no to anybody. It's very simple. Good for you. Yeah. Does that always work out for you, though? Yeah, it does. Because <laughs> cause if you're really my friend and I tell you no, you would respect the fact that I told you no. And if you was really my friend, you would still be my friend at the end of the day, even if I told you no. And does it matter how you say no? No. Well, I mean, it, sometimes you can say no in a hurtful way. Sometimes you can say no in a, you know, a meaningful way. But it all depends how the person takes it, too. Mm -hmm. Do you think about how you say no? No, not really. Sometimes I think about it too late. Like, I, I'll say no in a bad way, and then the person has a bad reaction, and I think afterward, if I would have said it differently, they maybe would. the whole thing would be different. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 All right, so I want to push it one other direction. <laughs> so how do you, what about saying no to injustice? Things that are wrong in the world. How do you say no to that? Hard. Speak up. It's, it's hard how? It's hard. Well, if you say it by yourself, it would be hard. But if you could bring together a group and you all say no, it would be would be like kind of easier because as a group, there's more people saying no than you want. What makes it hard? If you're here by yourself and you say no, how how would they know like everybody wants to say no and not just you? They wouldn't care if one out of a million people said no. If 50,000 out of a million said no, then they would have a reason to listen. I mean, I, I, mean, I think the cops, I still think the cops take their you know, authority to a whole other advantage. There's, there's people we can say no to about injustice other than the cops, right? Mm -hmm. Who who else can we say no to? Mom, dad, friend, sister, teacher, judge. <laughs> judge, great. You know, most judges are elected. So is voting a way we can say no? Yeah. I think it's a pretty huge way. Voting it takes more than basically one. Well, it does, but it starts with one, right? Yeah. And when yeah. people when people just go like I don't care I'm not gonna do it then that's one less say. But for that one, everybody else has to agree with that one person. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, it takes a lot of ones to make it happen, but it starts with one. What about the bullying situation, where you see other people being bullied? Have you ever said no then? That was a question. <laughs> well, I stood up for my friend one time when he was getting bullied, and my brother one time too. How that work out? It escalated to end up in the argument and then it got physical. Are you still rearranging or does he have to go? What? No. Should we shut down in a couple of minutes or how are you guys feeling? Or do you have, how much time do you have in Michigan? Um, we have about we have five, minutes. five minutes. Okay. One shot. So, I, I I don't know again what happened before I got here, but I've been asking. I think one questions. of my friends was joined. I'm wondering if you guys have any questions. Do you have questions? My name is Linda. <laughs> Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, talk. Say your question. No, I, I was asking if you guys have any questions. 
like we're going to be we're going to be connecting this way every Friday afternoon like this. What we could what we might end on is um, what you'd like to talk about. What are some of the issues you'd like to talk about on this forum together? Like next week, what do you want to talk about? Any thoughts? You can definitely see how the Baltimore thing. Is. I part of I want to talk about. Jim, go ahead. Oh, I part of want to talk about about gone that people. I didn't catch that. Try one more time. The gun problem, like people have gone, like so they sometimes they because of gun they kill really easily, like um, yeah. I was kind of shocked people hunt all the gun. So guns are guns are a big issue, yeah. Yeah. It's not only guns though. There's knives, different weapons made. There's jail I, weapons, like, prison weapons. It's not only guns. We don't have we don't have guns in our country, so actually we don't have to come up because of guns. Like okay. like when people just go to a high school and kill students, we don't have those kind of problems. We don't have guns. I never shot someone I never shot guns in my whole life. All right, I'm writing that down as a question for next week because I think that's a really good one. Go ahead, Can you Chris. repeat it, Karen? Yeah, I mean, how? what I would say is, like, how do guns and other weapons or just violence in general, like, how does that affect how we say no? That's fascinating. Christopher, did you have any thoughts, any questions, things you want to address? I, I, I hope it's Christopher. That's the name that's coming yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'll save it for next time. I don't want to get into it on this session. Have nothing left to talk about next time. So, but what would that be? That's what we're asking. Um, I think it, on the gun topic. I think it comes down to the person behind the weapon, because anyone can have a knife in the house or a gun, and you can the gun can just be a piece of metal put together. But until someone picks it up and chooses to shoot someone else with it, then it that's when it turns into a weapon. But I, great. And we will get into that more, but did you have any other questions you want to get into next week? Or topics. Um, other topics. No, I don't believe so. Okay. What? So I know about really the Baltimore thing. Dealing with the Baltimore thing is a big deal, and um, there are lots of things to deal with there. I heard there were officers indicted, right? Yes, they were this morning, yes, that's, that's 8 o'clock this morning. We talked about that. You did, good. good. Yeah. Um, cool. But there's a lot more than just that. Like, there's like, why did it talk about it already? You know. Um, hate to break it up, but we have to uh, leave. So okay. You warned us. No, it's good time. All right, cool. We're we'll glad you guys here. are here, and we're glad your audio issues worked out. And Enrique, it was nice to meet you. Yeah, it was nice to meet you. Michael, it was nice to see you again. Thank and you. And now I actually can see you, which is nice. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next down. Friday. Okay, bye. Right, well, Have a good weekend, everybody. You too. You too.